Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me on my channel. It's Lou Collins here. I've got a card for you today using the Textures Folk Art. So Floral Folk Art is a new collection that's exclusive to Craft Stash and this is using the Flora and Fauna die cut flowers and also the Bold Floral Background Embossing Folder. Um, let's walk through the steps and see how I put this together. And if you love this, please do give me a thumbs up and a subscribe, I would really love that. And of course, as always, everything I've used is linked down below. So let's get started. So we're going to start with the embossing folder and I love this embossing folder for beautiful backgrounds. When you need a kind of a, a background pattern, something subtle, but not something that's going to detract from the rest of the uh, detail within the design. This is absolutely perfect. Now, of course, it's got the floral folk art design. Um, it's six by six, so I've actually cut myself a six by six panel, and I've also got myself a card base that's the same size. I don't want a border around this one for a change. I'm actually going to have it as a solid colour, so that should just fit. Let's just make sure that's the right way around. There we go. That will fit just on there beautifully. I'm going to have this as a top fold card, so this needs to be the top. So I'm going to put this directly into my folder now, so I don't forget where the top is. Now the cardstock I'm actually using is one of the Tim Holtz Distress, um, the cardstocks, that, I think the Ideology, that had the craft and then the beautiful colours on the front. So this is one of those, I've had it a long, long time, I'm not even sure if they're even still available, um, but it's one that I've had in my stash and it's this beautiful teal colour. It's a dark, dark teal and I'll talk about my colour choices a bit later when we add the flowers. So obviously this was one of my new folders, I thought it was my old ones, it was stuck to the packaging there. So just pop that inside. Now with the textures embossing folders, when you run it through uh, the plate sandwich, usually with any embossing folder, you usually take with a big shot this kind of turquoise plastic plate out and put your embossing folder through two clear plates, usually. What I found that that is actually a little bit too much pressure for these folders that, because they're very deep, deep in design. So I'm going to put down the teal plate. Then I'm going to take a rubber mat so this is an embossing mat you can sometimes have these in your box with your die cutting machine if you don't you can purchase them individually just a thin rubber mat so the teal plastic plate thin rubber mat the embossing folder and then one of the clear plates and that is the perfect sandwich for these embossing folders and then look at this excuse the cars and the birds I've got the doors open today It'll soon be school time, so there'll be lots of cars around here. But look at that. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? And the colour is stunning. And this is why I kind of didn't want to do uh, a white frame around the card base. I wanted it to be quite dramatic by just having the solid front. So I can now glue this down onto my card base. I'm not going to do any stripping back of the design. So I could take some sandpaper to this, I could take some gilding wax to it, um, maybe some ink instead and really pick out the detail. But I don't want to with this, I want to leave it subtle, but there, isn't that just beautiful? So just with the wet glue, popping that onto my card base. So now I'm going to move on to the flora and fauna set and I have already die cut and constructed lots of these flowers. Now my suggestion would be with these because they are they're quite small dies actually but they make the most beautiful flowers so if I just pop them here for you to see let's just get them out of the packet again this is a new one this is obviously one of my display packets that I've picked up rather than my working one if I just show you, for example, each flower, and I would use the front of the packaging as a guide as well. So this flower is this one. So everything in this layer here is within this die here. So my suggestion to you is when you get this set is die cut everything from multiple different colours. So do your blues, your greens, your orange, your red, your pink, your purple. Do Just sit and have some fun die cutting and then go ahead and do your layering of different, multiple different colours, colourways and such afterwards. I do that and what I do is I keep everything in a little Tupperware box. So that's also got the floral folk art butterflies in there as well, but this is essentially all the little pieces that I've ever die cut from this. And if you do particularly want to just die cut one or two colours, go ahead, but all the spares that you don't use, put in that box as well. So I've gone ahead and die cut lots of bits and I've constructed lots of flowers. 
so I can just simply put these together now let's just they've got a bit tangled from the stems where I've been storing them but let's just untangle these and for my composition I'm going to have a strip across the middle here of the same color cardstock now this is a solid strip that's going to just sort of act as a border between the top and the bottom half and I've just got just putting this on with foam pads now because I'm putting it on with foam pads I've left a small border top and bottom here we go just exactly the same width and directly through the center there of the card it's a little bit overlapping that side so I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and just snip this edge because I want this card to be perfect to be pristine so then I'm going to start playing with positioning and what I tend to do is work with the largest flowers first and the largest flower heads are these ones I want to be heavier down the bottom mix and match the leaves too you don't have to stick with any particular leaves uh, this one is a two-headed flower there's one so I'm just getting my my flowers first and as you can see I have alternated the colors pretty much that's all of them so let's start playing at positioning um, we've got a couple of um, let's put that there so we kind of go purple blue purple blue purple and then in the same way here we want to go these are quite large these ones so keeping larger ones more to the center if possible and then smaller ones out to the edge if we can it's not always going to work in that way and you can keep nudging things along now that's the same as that one so let's put this in here and don't worry too much if you if you find actually you have got um, florals that are next to each other that are the same color there we go so I'm just doing my main stems at the moment and then I'm going to so, okay so I've got I've got far too many at the top there haven't I so let's move these along and put one of these down at the bottom now I've also got some fillers some stems there we go that's better happy with that so I'm not quite going to the edge happy with that yep lovely it might tuck the stems under a bit more to balance it but I would be happy gluing those down where they are so I'm going to go ahead and do that and as I do it if I've got any pieces like this that can overlap that strip I will pull those out at the same time so I'm going to start in the center work my way out on each layer there so I've got my main flowers down and now I can move on to a few other elements I've got so I've got a couple of these white pieces and I just thought the white was lovely because it was kind of a nice bright color that would stand out against all the dark colors so just a couple of them kind of a leaf shape but with a stem through the center so they could be a flower or they could be a leaf so I'm going to put those one oops either side so they're kind of diagonal to each other they'll be hidden amongst foliage but they'll just pop out a little now I also have a couple of small blooms let's just take that stem out of there if it wants to come out I think it's glued in there there we go one pink and per sorry blue and purple oh they're both the same sorry so both got the um, the blue on the top and the purple on the bottom now I'm going to save these because I'm going to scatter these where I feel I need fillers at the end it's always worth saving a few small flowers for towards the end and here's where I just go in and I fill in now I start filling in first of all with my bolder greens where I've got gaps so where I've got space and I absolutely need to fill spaces so for example there I'll go in with the bolder flowers and I work my way down to the smaller flowers gradually or leaves sorry leaves not flowers making it peek out from some florals at the top I think one of my flowers is going I'm going to do that now one of my flowers is going to go just in here and then I'll put this kind of over the top so it's not just sitting there layer that a little bit over the top of it there we go build that in and then I'll look at doing the same 
here or here. Let's have a look. Let's do it in the middle. There. And I've got a little stem here that can just go over the top. Now I could play with this for hours, adding more and more. But of course, just be wary. You don't want to overdo it. This is where I move from now on to my swirls. These are my last pieces. And these are almost like little vines. These ones have actually come from a different die set. They've not come from the flora and fauna. These ones have come from the uh, beautiful uh, large pa uh, panel from the same collection, a large circular panel with the flower die, layering flower dies as well. There we go. So just a couple more, I think, on the very ends. Taking them out. So one there, one just on here. Do you find it therapeutic to watch someone build up a card like this? I could do this, I really could do this for days. So let's just, one and the last one here. Okay, just there, there we go. I've got a couple left over, but I'll use those on another project. As I say, I'll pop them back in my tub and then that will be those. So look at that. The colours just work. By just using two main colours for the flowers, two shades of green for the stems, but actually they are very similar. And then I've got the flash of white and that's going to just echo this white sentiment that's going to go across the middle to help balance everything. So I've cut this out and... Um, just stuck it on foam foam tape here, a thin piece of foam tape. This is the same width as the card, pretty much. Just make sure if there's going to be an edge that it's even on both sides. A little bit, that's almost, it's almost there. There we go, there's always something to be thankful for. Now I might even go ahead and put a few little gems or sparkles but essentially that is that carpet together so really it's just building up these flowers but being careful about your colour choice. Have you noticed the blue teal is quite colour coordinated with the blue and the purple in the flowers. I've chosen all cool colours. You could go with a yellow background and red and orange flowers for example just to keep that sort of colour coordination going. So there's that card. Thank you for joining me. If you could uh, drop me a thumbs up and a subscribe, I'd love that and hope to see you again very, very soon. Don't forget everything I've used is linked in the description below. Take care. I'll see you soon.